Hey everyone, welcome back to a whole new session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha and in this session, you will learn all that you need to know about data binding in Angular. So let's take a quick look at what's in store for you guys. We shall first begin by understanding what exactly is data binding and the types of data binding available in Angular. Then we shall take a deep look at one way data binding that includes interpolation binding, property binding and event binding. Finally, we shall take a look at two way data binding in Angular. So now without any further delays, let's get started. So what exactly is data binding? Data binding is the mechanism that binds the application's UI or the user interface to the models. Using data binding, the user will be able to manipulate the elements present on the website using the browser. Therefore, whenever some variable has been changed, that particular change must be reflected in the document object model or the DOM. In Angular, data binding defines the interaction between components and the DOM. Data binding has been a part of all Angular versions, starting from Angular JS right through to the latest version, which is Angular 9. So, coming towards the types of data binding in Angular. Angular allows both one way as well as two way data binding. One way data binding is a simple type of data binding where you're allowed to manipulate the views through the models. This implies that making changes to the TypeScript code will be reflected in the corresponding HTML. In Angular, one way data binding can be achieved through interpolation or string interpolation, property binding, and event binding. Two way data binding, on the other hand, allows synchronization of data in such a way that views can be updated using the models and the models can be updated using the views. This means that your application will be able to share information between a component class and its template. So moving on towards one way data binding. In one way data binding, data flows only in one direction, that is, from the models to the views. As mentioned earlier, one way data binding in Angular can be of three types, that is, interpolation, property binding, and event binding. So talking about interpolation binding, Interpolation binding is used to return HTML output from TypeScript code, that is, from the components to the views. Here, the template expression is specified within double curly braces. Through interpolation, strings can be added into text that is present between HTML element tags and within attribute assignments. These strings are calculated using template expressions. So to show you an example of this, let me just open up my command prompt, and over here, I'll create a new Angular project. To create a new Angular project, all you have to do is type in ng new followed by the name of the project. Okay, so as you can see, you're going to encounter two questions. The first question will be regarding Angular routing. And for that, I've chosen yes. The second question is regarding the style sheet that you would like to prefer. Since I prefer CSS, I'll hit enter for CSS. Okay, so this is going to take a while. In case you guys are very new to Angular, I suggest you should watch the Angular 8 tutorial video from Edureka. Okay, so a project has been created. Now I'll get inside the project directory. And I'll open the same in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so a default project has been created for us from Angular. Now, in case you want to see how this project runs, what I'm going to do is get back to my command prompt. And over here, I'll type in ng serve hyphen o. The ng serve command is going to serve my project on the local host. When you type in an extension hyphen O or double hyphen open, it is going to open this project directly on local host port number 4200. So as you can see on the screen, I've encountered a question. Now those who are not familiar with Angular 9 might be wondering what this question is all about. Now this question is regarding collection of anonymous data from the Angular team. Now they want to do this to serve us better. Since my project does not have anything confidential, I'll just type in Y and I'll hit enter. So as you can see over here, this is the default page that appears when you run your project that you've created. Now all you have to do is modify this to build your application. So now I'll get back to my project and over here, I'll open up the app folder present in the source folder. And within this, I'll open the app component.html file and then I'll delete everything except the last line. Okay. I'll just save this. And I'll get back to my development server. Okay, so as you can see over here, nothing is actually present. This is because I just cleared off all the HTML that was present in order to display that default page. Now, what I'm going to do over here is just type in two curly braces, and within this, I'll just specify the title. Now, since I've already told you all before, to make use of interpolation, you'll have to specify the template expression within two curly braces. Now, if you guys are wondering what this title is, 
I'll open the app component .ts file and show that to you guys. So as you can see on the screen within the app component class, I have something called as the title. Now Angular has done this by default. I have the title of my project as ADB. Now when I save this and get back to my development server, you'll be able to see the title of the project. So as you can see over here, ADB or the title of my project has been returned. So basically, the app component.html file has taken data from the app component.ts file. Now to show you guys another example of this, I'll just open the app component.ts file. And over here, I'll create two new properties, which is course. And I'll name it as Angular. And another property will be image. Now within this image, I'll just paste in some random URL. The reason why I'm adding these two properties is to show you guys some more examples using interpolation. I'll just paste in some URL over here. I'll save this and I'll get back to my app component.html file. Over here, I'll open some paragraph tag and over here, I'll just type in something. I'll say learn the course name with Edureka. I'll save this and I'll open my development server. Okay, so as you can see over here, in place of course, I have Angular, which is the name of the course. Similarly, I can also return the image using interpolation. So what I'm going to do is just open up a div tag. And within this, I'll open the image tag. And the source will be the image. I'll save this. I'll get back to my development server. So as you can see over here, the image has been added. Not just this, you can also add in arithmetic expressions using interpolation. So just to show you an example of this, I'll type in two star two. I'll save and I'll get back to my development server. So as you can see over here, I have the result of two star two, which is four. So basically the component property that is specified within the two curly braces will be replaced by angular with the string value that is associated with that component property. Now, like I've already shown you all interpolation can be used for different purposes and different requirements. Not just this angular also allows you to configure the interpolation delimiter and use something of your choice instead of using the two curly braces. So now talking about property binding in property binding the value flows from a components property into the target elements property. Therefore property binding can be used to read or pull data from the target elements or to call a method that belongs to that target element. The events that are raised by the element can be acknowledged through event binding which will be covered later on in the session. So in general, you can say that the component property value will be set to the element property using property binding. Now to show you guys how to make use of property binding. What I'm going to do is just clear off this part. So property binding in angular is specified using square brackets. So in case I want to display the image using property binding, all I have to do is just make use of square brackets for the source. So I'll just open the image tag and I'll type in source within square brackets. And then I'll specify the name of the property, which is image. Okay, so as you can see over here, I've specified source within square brackets and over here, there are no two curly braces like the previous example. I'll just save this. I'll get back to my development server. Okay, so as you can see over here, the image has been returned using property binding. I know many of you have noticed that you can use interpolation and property binding interchangeably. In the previous example, I retrieved the same image without using the square brackets, but using the interpolation braces. So one thing I want you all to note over here is that when you need to set element properties to non string data values, you must use property binding and not interpolation. Okay, so now moving on towards event binding. The event binding feature lets you listen to certain events such as mouse movements, keystrokes, etc. In Angular, Event binding can be achieved by specifying the target event with regular brackets on the left hand side of an equal to sign and the template statement on the right hand side within quotes. Now to show you guys an example of this, I'll open up my project and over here, I'll just create a button. So I'll just open. I'll just create a div. And within this, I'll create a button. So over here, the target event is going to be click and the template statement will be go back. I've not created this function yet. I'll get back to the app component.ts file and over here, I'll just create a go back function. So it's going to be a simple function, which is not really going to return anything. So I'll just type in go back. I'll save this and I'll get back to my development server. Okay, so as you can see over here, a button has been created. Now this button can be clicked, but since I've not specified anything within the function, 
this button is not doing anything as of now to know more about this you can check out the angular 8 tutorial video from edureka okay so now moving on towards two way data binding in angular so basically whenever event binding occurs an event handler will be set by angular for the target event when that particular event gets raised the template statement is executed by the handler generally receivers are involved with template statements that perform actions in response to the event event binding is used to convey information about the event these data values of information include anything such as string object etc now let's move on and take a look at two way data binding Angular allows two way data binding that will allow your application to share data in two directions. That is from the components to the templates and vice versa. This makes sure that the models and the views present in your application are always synchronized. Two way data binding will perform two things. That is setting the element property and listening to the element change events. The syntax of two way data binding is a combination of property binding syntax. That is the square brackets and the event binding syntax, which is the regular brackets. So basically regular brackets will be present within square brackets. According to angular this syntax resembles banana in a box. Now to show this to you guys in detail what I'm going to do is open one of my projects where I've made use of two way data binding. NG model that you see over here is an example of two way data binding. Now in this project you will be able to see that when I make changes in the views it will be reflected in the models. Now this is because I've made use of two way data binding over here. So what I'm going to do is just open up my project and over here I'll try to change the name of the course. So in case I don't make use of two way data binding when I make changes to the name over here it should not be reflected to the name that is present over here. This name is reflected from the models. What I'm going to do is to try to make changes to this. So as you can see when I make changes to the views the corresponding change is reflected in the models as well. So this was an example of two way data binding. In case you guys want to know how I've created this project, you can check out the Angular 8 tutorial video. So with this, we've come to the end of the session. I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more interesting videos, but till then, goodbye and take care.